Hello and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to paint giraffe. So I have this grouping that I've been practicing here and for this lesson you're going to need cray paws, your watercolor set, and some India ink. And of course pencils and erasers. Now all along the way there will be different times in this lesson that you can decide you are done even when I am not done. I've designed this lesson to build upon some of the things that we've learned in our past lessons. So some of the interesting things that we've learned about India ink from when we did the cat. And then I'm leading you into our next lesson that we will do uh, with oil pastels and watercolors to teach you a little bit about resist. Um, and we're gonna talk about com composition. So we've got a lot to learn today and I'll let you know Whenever there's a fork in the road and you can decide that you would like to stop and that will be enough um, so that you know that you have choices because this one might take you a while, but it's worth it and it's super fun. All right, first off, we're going to draw the giraffe. So when I chose the direction of my paper for giraffes, we know giraffes have long necks, so we want to choose um, a way to exhibit those long necks. So we're having our paper be tall instead of sideways so that we can really emphasize the long neck. So this is a little bit more about our lesson about using abstraction. So when we did our dragonfly lesson, we looked at the dragonfly pictures and came up with an essence of a dragonfly. I'd say there's a little bit more detail to these drafts than there was to the dragonfly, but still, it's abstract. We're not going to do all their legs and tails and all their details. And we want to put kind of the emphasis of what is beautiful and wonderful about giraffes. So it's not exactly like caricatures because caricature drawings usually kind of make light or make fun of something. Um, like if you had a very large chin like Jay Leno, uh, they would draw a big chin for a caricature. So it's similar to a caricature in that it's what you notice. Uh, that you're emphasizing. So for giraffes, we notice that they have long necks. And when we're drawing the ears, we want to think about how usually their ears tend to be more kind of flat at the top and curvy at the bottom. So those are some things we're going to remember with our ears when we do them. And when we do their eyes, they have these gorgeous eyelashes. They like to eat acacia leaves and acacia leaves are a thorny tree. And so they have these like amazing eyelashes to keep leaves and thorns out of their eyes while they're eating. So we're going to use a stylized approach. We've got our brow bone, our eyelid, and we're really going to put in those amazing eyelashes. So that's something that we know about giraffes. Um, then their little horns that they have on top of their head. By the way, giraffes are the only horned animals that are born with their horns. Um, they're folded up and then they pop after they're born um, so that they can make it through the birth canal. So they, all of you mothers are going, ouch, when you think about giving birth to an, something with horns. Um, but yeah, look it up. Baby giraffes are super cute. They look like a birthday party hat on their heads when they are born. Um, so their horns, when we stylize our horns, we're going to go with long and skinny kind of like that so we got our letter m all right so those are just our stylized designs from the giraffes and now you want to think about other elements in a drawing so things that are closer to you are huge and things that are farther away are small so my one hand looks a lot smaller than that so if you're doing a horn at the side a horn that's far away is going to be small and a horn that's close is going to be bigger. So that shows distance. Okay, that's a lot. We've got a lot. So we're going to get started with drawing. And we are going to start with our two main giraffe that are here in the middle. We've got these two and I love how they're kind of snuggled together. So <clears throat> we're going to choose. Oh, you know, I always like to do this. Try to find the middles on your tape. Do on your tape, not on your actual artwork. So when you find those middles, that's our compass to help us find our way around. Uh, so I have my nine by 12 piece of paper taped to another piece of paper. And of course I'm standing here at an easel in my art studio. Okay, 
I'm gonna teach you how to draw these giraffes, but I'm also gonna teach you a few tricks too. So one of the things when I teach drawing is I like to find an anchor in the drawing. An anchor is something that kind of holds everything all together. So for this picture, uh, this line is a very much like an anchor and this line is very much like an anchor. I think I like this one because it's all the way near the top and it works its way down. And so very gently, we're just gonna draw a line that starts near to our middle, but maybe a little over from it and slightly diagonal. You can see there's a measure like about an inch and a half, two inches, inch and a half, two inches. So I'm gonna go like this. All right, phew, first line is done. It's always the hardest part. Now. I'm gonna teach you how to draw this whole giraffe right here, but I've done something unique today to help you with this. And I thought I have, it kind of looks like a puppet show, okay? Um, because I was thinking about their necks and lines and with this giraffe, we want a straight line. We don't want like a curvy line. He's, he doesn't need to see his chiropractor. Um, and so I, I've drawn them like little, little puppets to help with their arranging this. So it's like super fun. So you could draw this picture and separate piece of paper and then make little puppets. So see what I did there? I drew that on separate piece of paper and put it on there. And so what I noticed is I can do this kind of thing to kind of test where things are going. This is kind of like sketching only faster. Uh, actually it's slower because you have to draw it and then cut it out, but faster for you to see. So that's about where that line would put that giraffe. So you might decide like, oh no, I want it more this way or this way. And so this is kind of a fun and helpful way. Um, different people learn different in different ways, right? So this is kind of a helpful way. And then I'm imagining where all my other little parts might be. So I've got my um, giraffe that's eating trees, eating leaves. I put that blue tongue in there, it's super fun because they've got that tongue. So I'm gonna scoot this little guy's neck right down in there. Look at that. All right, so he's there and he's there. And then got this other one that's kind of going, it's gonna follow this line. So sharing on that line, so I'll nestle that down there. And then my super little guy is gonna join on this side. Oh no, she doesn't fit. Okay, so I'll just scoot her back that way, no problem. All right, so this is a way to practice composition in advance before you draw something. And is it gonna look exactly like that when I'm done drawing it? Of course not, because I draw stuff over and over and it's different every single time. Um, but this is a way to get things kind of going and started. And I could, I could trace it and make it exactly like that. So um, as I teach you how to draw these giraffes, you can either draw it on a separate piece of paper like puppets and cut them out and trace them, or you can draw them on your actual artwork, or you can do it both ways because then you'll learn two things. All right, so here I go, taking my puppets away. I have my line. This horn is closest to us, so it'll be taller. Closer things are taller and bigger and closer to us. Then the horn that's farther away is shorter and smaller. And then we have the nose. All right, then we're gonna make the other giraffe snuggle into that nose. So we've got an angle going the other way. So I'm gonna start here cross that line, come near inside and curve back. So it's kind of looks like I've been playing with a paper clip and kind of unbent it. So we've got straight line curve, straight line curve, straight line. All right, then we can make this neck run down. And when you draw, be sure to press gently because if you press really hard, it's difficult to erase. Um, so I'm gonna have the neck of this giraffe coming right down. And then we'll get her horns on. So we're gonna have two horns on this at an angle and an ear and her neck. Okay, 
We've got that in place. We're going to worry about faces a little later. Let's get the basic outside structure of the giraffes first, and then we can do their faces. All right, so next we're going to lay in the small one on this side, and we're going to have the front of her neck kind of be in, we'll, we'll stick it just a little farther in front of this. So if I had very little room here, I would make the neck back. But because I have enough room for the face, I'm going to have the neck be in front. So I'm going to draw a line down so it kind of joins that space and get that line in front. And then we have the nose, a single horn, an ear, and down. I am going to take care of that x-ray vision, so let's erase that out of there so that it's not confusing us later. Oh look, we forgot her mane, so we want to run a line straight down. And we'll stop there, and it looks like it would be the front of the neck. So if you drew the mane first, the front of the neck might coincide with that line. So that's kind of interesting. All right, next I'm going to draw the mane on this one. So I'm going to stick an ear up from here. So straight on top, curvy on the bottom, straight on top. Okay. Um, I think it will be easier if we rotate this picture so that we're looking straight on at the face instead of having to draw it upside down. So I'm going to take my picture and reposition it so I can show you how to do that. Okay, now my pictures look like acrobats. So I've got them upside down so that I can look at the symmetrical nature of this face and get it on there. Uh, so this is gonna be super fun. They have blue tongues. And so I want that blue tongue to kind of be heading into the corner. Thought that would be a lot of fun. And then we're gonna get the muzzle and the side of the face, side of the face, and an ear curvy on the bottom and that's the inside of the ear whoops i did a detail oh well you'll forgive me for the detail straight on the top straight on the top and we have the two horns right next to each other they kind of look like a pair of pants okay and then we'll run the neck straight back behind the other giraffes okay i can put that back in the right direction and no nope, let's do the eyes because I know I wasn't doing details before, but while I've got this upside down, let's go ahead and get the eyes. Um, yeah, it looks like I got the face a little crooked, so let me get this side a little bit more symmetrical. Okay, so because we can see both sides of the face, we can see it straight on, this is a good one to talk about the features of the face. So we're going with the stylized eyes. They tend to have a little bit browner fur on the length of their muzzle. Um, so I'm gonna get their little nostrils. It'll look like two rainbows. We got this darker patch of fur that kind of comes up for the bridge of the nose and a curve for the eyebrow, curve for the eyebrow. And then I'm having all my giraffes kind of be lovingly with their lids closed and concentrated eyelashes. Um, I just thought it was like a neat design for this one. If you prefer eyes, you're welcome to do eyes. Um, I'm just really focusing on their amazing eyelashes. So I've got that and that and eyelashes. There we go. We've talked about composition before that even numbers are not as cool as odd numbers. So we have our five giraffes. So we're going to do our fifth giraffe now. And the fifth giraffe, we're going to have kind of join on this side. So I'm going to run a line down and it will go behind that one and we'll get an interesting design going this way. So I'll use this space. And inside ear and the mate. Erase the x-ray vision. You're going to have the big guy's neck be a little twisted in space. So I'm going to have his mane start maybe about here and be on the inside. So on the others, I added a line to the outside. And this one, I made kind of a wedge shape on the inside. So let's move on for the features for the rest of the draft. So I've got my style. 
My style is going to be uh, the bridge of the nose, curve up, an eyebrow that comes almost to the back of the neck, a curve that doesn't touch. We're going to let it not connect. Uh, imagine like cutting a paper doll. You don't want the arms to get cut off. So that's why we didn't cut it all the way through. We want that space to be left there. Uh, rainbow nostril, uh, cute little chin. Okay, so we'll do that going the other way. Curve up, eyebrow to the side. Curve in, but don't touch. Eyelashes, nostril, cute little chin. All right, and we'll do that one here. Up, follow the bridge of the nose, come back, curve, curve back in, do not touch, eyelashes, nostril, cute little chin. All right, now for this one, we're going to have the bull giraffe being turned kind of in our direction. So we're going to see two rainbows for his nose, and then we're going to have this top part kind of shaped slightly like a pear to get this to fit. Kind of like this. And he still has good eyelashes because he doesn't want thorns in his eyes either. Okay, we've got that. Oh, one more ear. So we'll put another ear over here, straight on top, curvy on the bottom, and then we'll get all the rest of the lines. So we need a line in that ear. We'll loop this up and down for a line in that ear. And we'll loop this line up and down for a line in that ear. This one's going to be the back side of the ear. That's why we don't have a line there. Okay, when we look at our drawing, we want to make sure that the lines for our neck are straight. Uh, they don't have to be parallel. Sometimes they span out, uh, but mostly the lines are straight. And so for this next step, I would really like it if you used a small paintbrush and your India ink to outline these guys. But oftentimes I'm asked, can I use a Sharpie? So yes, you may use a Sharpie. And I'm going to insert a picture of what it looks like traced with India ink right here. All right, and now I'm going to use a Sharpie marker on this one so that you'll be able to see the difference between what it looks like with a Sharpie and what it looks like with ink. And then you can make your decision after watching this video which way you would like to do it. All right, here I go, tracing all my lines with a Sharpie. I'm all traced, but I noticed a couple things that I forgot. So I need the two lines right through here for where the mane goes. And then we're gonna put a ladder design on the manes to distinguish them from the neck. So you're gonna find those skinny mane areas and do a mane. Uh, by the way, I mentioned I was gonna give you choices. You do not have to do five giraffes. You do not. So I think it would look really cool if you wanted to keep it simple to just stick with the two single large giraffes to begin with. So if you're like five giraffes, that's a lot. This will still be a perfectly lovely picture if you only did the two tall ones. Um, and then of course you, you might want to be selective and be like, oh, but you know, I do have a, a, a child. So you could arrange yours slightly different. So you could have a trio of giraffes. See, you've got lots of choices. Um, so I'd say you could work your way from two to three to five giraffes, and then your project will be unique to you. Um, you can do these for all your family members. You can make giraffe families for everyone and then have like the same number of giraffes that they have family members. Boy, wouldn't that be fun? Uh, you, you might need a larger piece of paper if you have a really large family. So there we go. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing these lines on the main. I'm mean, going to get everything traced, then erase it thoroughly, and then uh, we are going to move on to the next step. It's traced and all ready to go. First, we're going to take our India ink and paint the whole background black. So you're going to go right up to the tape. Make sure your tape is pressed on really nicely so that it doesn't scoot under there. And then use a brush that's as large as you can use, that's still pointy, that can still get in to fill it in uh, so that it doesn't take you forever to do it. All right, for the background, we use straight India ink. You just want a permanent black ink that you're painting with for that. So 
Um, any permanent black ink that you can paint with will work out just fine. Um, and so this is the straight up ink. And then I've put a little water in this container and I've washed my brush in the water to try to create a medium gray color. So this was something that we practiced in our last lessons uh, of how to have a gray color. And you can see there is quite a difference between this gray and the black and still yet a difference between it and the white. So maybe I'll go a teeny bit darker though. Let's see what we got. Sometimes it separates. I do have to go ahead and use it. Yeah. If I let it set, I learned last time, if I let it set, then it separates and gets kind of grainy. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. And we're going to paint this and some different places. We're going to do uh, the mane of the giraffes. And we're going to put some tone on the tips of their horns and kind of on their little faces up here so that there's a darker tone to the top of their face and not on the bottom. So we'll do that throughout. Okay, I have the shadowy tone on the manes, the faces, whoops, I forgot a face. And then I also went inside their ears and on the tips of their horns. This next step is going to be reminiscent of when we used India ink to create some furry lines on our tabby cat. Uh, so we're going to use two brushes. I want one brush to be in the straight up India ink and I'm going to use the other brush in the gray paint that we used. It is possible to just use water, uh, but I'm using the gray paint because then you can see where I'm putting it exactly. And with the water, it could be difficult to see. So it's okay to have that kind of indicator color in there. And then we're doing a wet on wet technique. This time we are not painting the whole entire giraffe. Last time we painted the whole cat and then we put the ink on it to spread. But this time I'm gonna use the gray to make the spots. So it's kind of patchwork. And I want it to be pretty wet still. And that's why I'm not gonna do all the giraffes at once. I'm gonna do one giraffe at a time so that my puddles don't dry on me before I get a chance to do the neat wet on wet technique. So I've got that giraffe with wet spots. And if ever you have too much moisture, you can dab it off on a napkin with your paintbrush and then use your brush kind of like a little sponge to soak it up. So those puddles are wet. I don't want to wait too long for them not to be wet. I'm going to get some of this ink on off of my brush and then I'm going to go straight up and down and kind of poke it in the middle so that it can spread. So there is what it just looks like if I just poke and it spreads all on its own. Um, but I'd like to see maybe a little more than that. This is another case where you can decide when you'd like to stop. So maybe that is a fascinating design and that's how you would like it. I'm going to just do a little bit more poking so that it spreads a little bit bigger. And it's important to do like up and down polka dot spots instead of like brushwork. So you get those kind of interesting giraffey spots. And now we'll do that on all of the giraffes. I have the camera close so we can do an extreme close up so you can see this again, very close up. So you've got the moisture here. Um, I was just thinking this could be a cute project with kids if you had like an ink pad they could use their fingerprints. Uh, they could actually stamp their thumbprints on the necks of the giraffe to have the spot. So that could be super cute. All right, get the wet puddles. And then I've got my ink brush and I'm gonna knock a little on the paper towel and then touch it. Oh, I need a little more ink on there. It must have been dry. Okay, there we go. So it's spreading, spreading, spreading. And then I'm gonna keep poking it till those spots make me happy. All right, we wanna let those dry before we do any work on top. So this is time to go drink a glass of water or something. Um, first, we'll do the little freckles on their face though. You could do it with a Sharpie marker or you could just do it with the tip of your brush. 
they have little tiny spots here on this area of their face. Little freckles. All right, gonna let that dry. Okay, we're at a crossroads again. So if you prefer black and white, you don't have to continue. You can keep it at this black and white stage. But if you're continuing on with me, we're gonna use these three colors of oil pastel. The brown one, that's a reddish brown. The pale orange one, that's kind of peachy and white. And also, I'm going to insert the other picture of what it looks like with the India ink instead of the tracing with Sharpie right here so that you can see the difference between the two. So here is the India ink only picture. And here is the picture that we traced with the Sharpie marker. All right, so we're going to continue first. We're going to start with our brown one and we're going to put it in several places. Uh, we're going to put some lines kind of between our ladder marks in our mane and we're going to put some hair sticking out of their antlers or horns. And I'm going to use kind of a radiating star design like this in all of the spots. So. At any point, you can decide, you know what, I am good with this, but not good with that, because maybe you love your spots just the way they are, so you do not have to do this on your spots if you prefer to keep them with that nice black look to them. And then we're very gently going to color a little brown up here on their little faces. So I'm using very little pressure, and so it kind of creates that, creates that furry kind of look. So we will do that everywhere. We did the manes, the stars on the spots, faces, the hairs on the ends of the horns. There it is. So this is the picture with black and white and brown. It's yet another crossroads. You can decide this is exactly what I'm going for and stop right now, or you can keep going. I'm gonna use the pale orange for inside their ears. All the ears are finished. Remember, this is the outside of the ear, so I just did kind of a line there. If you're still with me, we'll move on with white. If you're happy with it is, you can stop and just watch the rest of the video for entertainment purposes. Let's do the eye first, okay? So I'm gonna do a little line of white, right, kind of like the opposite of eyeliner. So right above the, the lid line, it's a nice bold white stripe there. And then I'm gonna do some maze work. So pretend like you're doing a little maze and you're gonna go in and out in between these little spots on the neck. So it creates a trail. So you're kind of circling them and going in between and it will pick up some of that brown color and create a little mark. And that's pretty much the only place I'm going. So we've got the eyelids and a trail in between all these spots. And I'll put a little line kind of above all the ears, a line of white. So I know you can't really see the white at this point on your picture. It's gonna create an interesting texture and we're using it as a resist with our watercolor. So we're gonna get our watercolors out next. And this is another juncture where you can decide, hey, you know what? I'm happy with how it looks right, right now. Or you can move on with me to the painting. I'm going to create a color using the yellow and the orange and a little bit of the brown. And my wells in my watercolor pan isn't quite large enough for what I want to do. I want to make sure I have enough paint that I can kind of wash over all of these giraffes. So I've got some water in this container and I'm going to start with the yellow first because it's the lightest color and really build up some nice yellow paint here. And this will take a while. So I'm going to keep picking it up, getting it wet. I could even use a pipette to kind of suck that up out of that well and put it in there. And so we're going to do that for a while. And then we're going to add orange. And then we're going to add a little brown. So we're going to do that for a while. All right, 
I've created a nice puddle of what kind of looks like yellow ochre. So it's mostly yellow with a little orange and even a tinier bit of brown. And I've kind of tested it here to see like, okay, it does it show up or does it still look like water? And it does show up, so that's good. I'm happy with that. And you don't want to use your most favorite brush in the world because the oil from the oil pastels are going to get on your bristles. And then later on, be sure to clean up with soap in order to get it off. And of course, we've learned from all the nature commercials that Dawn dishwashing liquid is really good at cutting grease. Um, so, but I'm sure any dishwashing liquid would work too. So you're going to use something like that to clean your brush later. All right, so we're going to brush this over. You have to keep your brush nice and wet with the paint because it's going in between the spaces that the oil pastel is there. It will resist the white, so it won't go where the white is. And we didn't color very thoroughly with the white, so we do want this to go somewhere. Um, so if, if, you're, if you're watching the video first and going back and doing the project, um, do leave some paper for the yellow and browns and things to go on. Don't just completely color it carefully with white. You want that interesting texture where there's a mottled look of both. I've zoomed in closer so that you can see where the yellow kind of is on there and there's the white resist. Now that I have the yellow everywhere on the giraffes and I even have a little bit on the Indian, not a big deal if it gets on the Indian ink. The only place I'm trying not to paint is on the tongue, and I'm not going to go out of my way to paint on the Indian ink because that's just a waste of my energy. Um, but I've got this yellow paint on here pretty much everywhere, and now I'm going to go in the brown, kind of straight in the brown, and bring that color to my giraffes too. So I'm going to add that a little there. Um, just for a little bit more color for them, a little bit up on their faces and kind of on their manes and that will look super interesting It's important now to let this dry naturally. You can see why we used permanent ink uh, for the black so that it didn't come back to life when we did all this coloring and water paint on top. Um, and you wanna use that strong paper that I recommend so it can dry flat and the tape helps with that. And we, we last but let, not least, we will be painting our tongue, but we really want this paint to be completely dry before we do that because if we just paint a blue tongue, then this brown is gonna crawl right into there. And so we're just gonna leave this be. Go drink some more water, you'll be well hydrated. All right, and we'll be back in just a moment to paint that tongue. Okay, it's dry, especially here near to the tongue. So I've got a little water on my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little blue, a little purple. I added a little purple to it because I like how the purple looks with the yellow. It's a complementary color with the yellow. Um, and then we will get this blue and purple together. And that will be a right color for the fun blue tongue that these giraffes have. Awesome. All right, and now that is all finished. And now we're all finished. Thank you for joining me today. This is the one that we did today, our finished product. And this is the one that we started off looking at, my practice picture. Um, I hope you had fun, I really did. And now you know a variety of ways to make a variety of giraffes because you can have two, three, four, five, you can even add six, seven, I don't know. Just get a big piece of paper and you have a whole world of giraffes. And they can be black and white or color anything. It was super fun. And I'll see you next month when we will do some more with our materials to take it one step farther. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.